I, th- I think it's a story about I think it's a story about, about a lot of things and, and cohesiveness with musicians and fans and friends and how you spend your vacation time and how we're so related to see one another and but for the first camp out, the, the, the greatest memories of that were um, uh, I had went there and I was talking to a buddy of mine who I I, I knew from high school, kind of grew up with him sort of, and I was like, hey, you're like a diesel mechanic in Orange County. I said, I know you, you love Cracker. I said, hey, man, I'm coming out there for this, like, uh, festival, and it's, like, 25 bucks, like, a day, and uh, it's Cracker who you love, and uh, so you want to go with me? He's like, uh, it's Cracker in the desert close to me, and it's affordable, and we can camp. And I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, absolutely. For for like myself and, and a lot of uh, especially a lot of East Coast crumbs, I, I had spent a lot of time hiking and backpacking in like the Southwest and in California. So, but but even so, it, it was still it looked like a different planet, but yeah. but a wonderful planet of rock and roll. <laughs> First thing that comes to mind is David Lowry saying, hi, I'm shitty Batman. <laughs> uh, you know, that's how he opened up. He had a Batman uniform on. It's, and hi, I'm shitty Batman. And it just, it, it set the pace. It set the tone for the whole night. I my bike. I turn my car. Take me the air. So, Julie Bradlow, welcome to Lo-Fi Lounge. And, uh, Thank you, Chris. Yeah, and uh, let's talk about the camp out. You, you tell me what yeah. your first impressions when you, when you first went, the first year you went, or how that worked. Well, it's one of those things. Well, it's sort of like in the, in the Wizard of Oz when, you know, you realize at the end that uh, if somebody had told Dorothy at the beginning that she could go home just by clicking her heels and saying there's no place like home, she wouldn't have believed them. And that's what Glinda the Good Witch said. And camp out is like that. There's, there's no way to accurately describe it to people. Mm-hmm. I think, uh, I think the, the videos you show and the pictures you show will help. But there were all kinds of things people told me about camp out before I, my first camp out that I didn't really understand until I was there. You know, my first camp out was camp out four. Okay. And that was the dangerous first camp out. But you had played at the prior camp out. Uh, you had died, I guess the Death of Me album had just come out. Right. I, I, and so, I'm glad you remember that because I was getting my timing all off. But yeah, so Death of Me, we played there as, uh, I, I think it might have been one of the first Thursday night things that they did. I think we were there. I, I think that, that, I think that's right. And certainly, uh, certainly the first camp that I went to, uh, Dangers played Thursday night, and it was the first Dangers camp out show, and I guess the first Dangers show in a while. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, well, I mean, of course I had seen, you know, by the time I got to camp out, of course, I had seen Cracker many times. I had seen, at that point, I had seen Camper Van Beethoven a few times, not as many times as Cracker. But I, you know, my, my first Danger show, I was absolutely blown away. There is nothing, and that was back to my point, is there's nothing anyone could have told me that would have prepared me for that. I, I know that you were, you had recalled once that you and I first officially met when I was standing there waiting for porch stock to start and you came over and put your guitar down next to me and said, would you watch my guitar? 
going to solve it. And that was a that was a great porch doc. I mean, it was a classic one for the ages. I want to say that you and Johnny played San Bernardino Boy about five times during <laughs> that porch doc. So just kind of kept circling back to it. So by the time porch doc started, let's say it was two in the morning. Yeah. California time. Um, I was very jet lagged. I was still on East Coast time. I think I had I'd arrived the night before. So let's say it was Thursday. I had arrived Wednesday night and it was the middle of the night. And as you say, it, I mean, it was just dark out there. It's so dark. So it was just, it's, it's really, uh, it was really hard to describe other than to say there, I mean, it, it had kind of an otherworldly feeling and I'll see pictures from that porch dock and, you know, they, they kind of capture what it was like. There was something, it was something kind of dreamlike about it, maybe because I was jet lagged and in mm -hmm. my head it was five in the morning. Did you meet a lot of new people at this, at your first camp? Then? Oh, I, I, I did. I mean, there were, there were people there. I had, there were a lot of people there I had met before. At that point, I knew a great many of the crumbs who lived in the Southeast US, a lot of whom were at uh, Camp Out. I had actually met a lot of the West Coast crumbs a few months earlier when Camper Van Beethoven had its 25th anniversary show at the Fillmore in San Francisco. Yeah. In, it was, I, I wanna say it was the, the last weekend in June I remember it was right before the week of July 4th. And that was a crazy week because I flew out to San Francisco, went to the camper show, flew back through Charlotte, and then the next day flew to New York to spend uh, several days with family. Yeah. So that was quite a trip in and of itself. But I had met a lot of the West Coast crumbs there. There were, I'm not sure there was more than one or two other people from the East Coast at that time who came to the to the camper 25th anniversary show. So I had met those people and they were all at camp out, but there were a lot of people that that was my, and a lot of whom showed up not only at porch dock, but also at lo-fi and it was my first time meeting them. It was my, my first time meeting Kevin Day. Yes. My first time meeting Chill Eye, <laughs> the other, you know, the other Kevin. Camp Out 4, if I recall, there were not any costume themes. We all just kind of showed up. Yeah. And uh, Lean and Mean. It was Lean and Mean. It was like yes. a pure, pure version. But the, tell folks about the costume because that really became a, uh, it became a thing. Oh, no, uh, no question. It, uh, well, the way I describe it, it's sort of like the, that Dr. Seuss book, The 500 Hats of Barth Bartholomew Cubbins, whereas He's taking off the hats, they become fancier and fancier. And uh, the, the costume themes kind of got that way. If I recall, the first, uh, the first uh, camp out with costumes was Camp Out Five. And David had asked that one night, everybody dress all in white. I think that was, I think that was a shorter camp out. It was just a Friday and Saturday. And he had asked, okay, Friday night, you know, would everybody please dress in white? Saturday night, would everyone please dress in black? And if you, if you, I don't, I can't, rem I guess you would have been there on Friday night. Yeah. And I remember standing in line to get my, you know, my pass for a camp out. And there was, there was David in his hoodie handing out Kool-Aid. That's right. That's a very famous. And that was part of it. That was part of it too, the whole Unabomber thing. Yes. And uh, so he was handing out Kool-Aid and uh, that famous picture of him handing out Kool-Aid, that was actually a photo that I took. I had just oh, gotten yeah. the new digital camera and I asked if I could take his picture since he wasn't on stage. I felt like I should ask. And he says, of course, and he strikes this little pose. <laughs> and I had a second to catch the shot. And I, like I said, I just got this camera. So I was hoping that, you know, it turned out okay. And it did, uh, it did turn out okay. But uh, so that was, the, that was the first year, black and white. And then, you know, every year, the thing, I want to say that Camp Out 6 was the year that one night we were cowboys and one night we were Indians. Mm -hmm. Camp Out 9, where there was, one night was Canada versus Mexico and <laughs> one night was Hawaii. I don't know where, I don't know where David came up with these themes, but there was actually, and I won't, I won't, 
uh, call him out for fear of embarrassing him. There was actually somebody who had fresh flower lace flown in from Hawaii mm. and was, uh, was handing them out to people. I yeah. was like, that, that's dedication. What I, what I liked about, what I liked about the, la the last camp out is certainly, uh, I think because it was the last one, there were people who hadn't been in a while who were there. There were people who had never been to a camp out who were there. And that, uh, I think there was some concern that, oh, gee, it's going to be overrun because there's so many people. But it really didn't have that feeling. Mm -mm. It had, uh, and certainly for the, uh, you know, the, you know, the diehards, the loyalists among us, it was, it really was. It really was something special. It really was, I thought, from beginning to end, you know, the best camp out ever. Yeah. Just because I think everyone gave their all because you know, nobody knew you know, when a gathering like this was going to happen again, when we were going to see each other again. Yeah. As you say, it, wasn't, it was partly about the music, partly about the, you know, this group of people, and just this, this notion of just, you know, putting, you know, putting the past in the past and going forward into the, you know, the unknown. Mm -hmm. And well, I, all I, all I can say is, uh, is given, given the way 2020 has turned out, it, that turned out to be the, this absolutely brilliant stroke of foresight. Another song about the rain Another song about the rain This is the Cracker Duo here! Anyway, please give a hand to Chris Leroy. Here's a song that you can get for a good plug here. From now. Here we go. Let's see. Well, I'm lucky for my fingers. Lucky bed to sleep. Lucky thoughts to linger.
two 